All right, do me a favor. Before you sit down, just find two people and say, today's your day. Just say, today is your day. Just the two people over there at the city, help me out. Today is your day. All of my friends at the Everglades Correctional Institute, come on, let's make some noise for all of them tuning in as well. Today is your day. If you got a Bible, turn with me to James chapter four. James chapter four. We are in the fifth part of our vision collection entitled For the Sake of Eternity. That's what we've been talking about here at Vu Church. We have been talking about the fact that our reality is connected to eternity. That what you're doing right now in the here and now has eternal ramifications attached to it. I don't think that what we're doing here at Vu Church is something small. I don't think what we're doing here at Vu Church is just by coincidence. I think it's a divine appointment. I think that God has arranged all of us for such a time as this. And today, at the end of my message, many of you have come in prepared to give. Others of you, I'm just believing as I preach today that God's gonna speak to you and he's gonna tell you what it is that you should give, that all of us, I'm believing, we're gonna have the greatest participation we've ever had in an offering, that we're gonna come together and we're gonna be generous, that we might see the vision of this house move forward. And uh, just so you know, if you're new to Voo Church, you're under no obligation to give whatsoever. This only happens one time a year. And so uh, we don't talk about money a whole lot every year. We've got a lot of people that are generous that help this place move forward. But once a year, we come boldly, we come without shame, and we speak confidently saying, what can we do together? And I'm just believing that right now, God's gonna do something in our house like we've never seen before. So I just wanna kind of recap a little bit about where we have been this text I wanna read is where we kinda of started out five weeks ago, and I really think it's become the foundational text that's a challenge for all of us as we close this collection today. James chapter four, verse 13. This is what the brother of Jesus, he said. He said, now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Verse 14, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? And here's the challenge. You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. What is your life? That's what I wanna preach about for the next few minutes. I wanna ask you that question on our Bricklayers Offering Sunday. What is life? your life. And would you pray with me now, Lord, we thank you so much that you are moving. We thank you so much, God, that you are at work. God, we thank you for this place we call home, Vu Church. God, we thank you that in just six short years, you have done so many incredible things. But Lord, today on this Sunday, as we gather, Lord, not just to spectate the vision, but to participate, we are prophesying and we are declaring that our best days are in front of us. God, I pray that today, Lord, you would speak to hearts in the room, online, wherever they're tuning in from, and that, Lord, we would come together and we would see this vision for the sake of eternity, Lord, unleashed in the earth. God, we pray for our church. Lord, do something with our church that we could never even really begin to imagine. We believe, God, that you are at work, and so we celebrate you and we put our trust in you. And if you agree with that prayer today, all of God's people said... Come on, all of God's people said. Come on, if you love Jesus, can you put your hands together? Come on, city. Come on, Somi. Come on, line. Make some noise all over this place. What is your life? That is the question that I have been um, really asking myself really for the last five weeks as we kicked off this collection. But I gotta be honest with you, uh, this week, more than any other week, I've been asking myself that question. It's been a, um, a busy season here at Vu Church. Uh, last week, we had Vu Basil. Anybody in the room make it to Vu Basil last week? Just such a special time that we got to really spread the gospel in our city through creativity and through art. And it was a really big week. And some of you, you heard the story, but we got to collaborate with a friend of mine his name is Virgil Abloh, who was the uh, art 
director uh, for Louis Vuitton. He's the owner and founder of Off-White, a massive uh, luxury uh, fashion line. And he was meant to be at the event with us, and he was meant to actually share the stage with me on Friday night, and he was going to share some of his testimony and some of his story on faith and We're gonna talk about our collaboration and then we're gonna really give honor where honor is due to the true creator, God. Uh, But before the event began, most of us in the room and most of us online heard the news that Virgil, he he passed away after a two-year battle with cancer. And none of us were expecting him to pass away before the event. In fact, I was planning for him to be at the event. But it it quickly shifted the entire Uh, purpose and motivation of the event, and it in many ways became a tribute to Virgil's life, and it became a challenge to all of us that came, what is your life? Life is but a mist. It's here one day, and it's gone the next. This week, uh, I found myself in Chicago getting to lead the funeral for Virgil and his family, and it was one of the great privileges of my life getting to share the gospel on that stage with so many people that are far from God and so many people that have never heard the gospel message. But I found myself in a funny spot this week that on Monday, I'm doing a funeral for a friend of mine, 41 years of age, who's now with Jesus, two little kids and a wife who's mourning. But then just five days later, I'm in Los Angeles, California for one of the elders of our church, Jason Kennedy, my dearest friend since I was in high school. He was celebrating his 40th birthday in California. And I just had this kind of moment, right? Like on Monday, I'm burying a friend. And on Saturday, I'm celebrating a friend. And to me, it's a picture of what life looks like. Life is beautifully painful, that life is full of these beautiful mountaintops, and then, of course, life is full of deep, deep valleys, and in the middle of all of it, life is happening, and life is going to happen. Life is but a mist. It's it's but a vapor, and even in this room today, there can be people that are going through the greatest of times, and there's people that are going through the hardest of times. Someone's getting married in the room, and then somebody else is struggling to go through a divorce right now. Uh, Somebody's having a baby and somebody's burying their father. It's a beautifully painful life that we don't get to control, that we are not in charge. All we can do is recognize that life is passing by. And the question is, what will we do with the mist that's given to us? I want us to be a church that recognizes that we are not promised tomorrow. I want us to be a church that recognizes that we are called to seize the moment, seize the day. I don't want to waste time on this earth. I don't want to waste one moment complaining. I don't want to waste one moment with bitterness. I don't want to waste one moment with resentment. I want us to be a church that speaks out what's in our heart. I want us to be a church that pours ourselves out as an offering unto the Lord, recognizing that all we have in comparison to eternity is just a few seconds. So why not use every one of those seconds to give God glory and to reach people who are far from him? What is your life? In weeks like this, where I'm burying one friend and celebrating another, I have to ask myself, What is my goal? And as I ask myself that, I'm also asking you and of course our church. I think many people in 2021 have a shallow goal. And the shallow goal is I just wanna be successful. My goal is just to be a success. In the passage I read in James, the context really, really matters because in many ways that's what's taking place. And I, I shared a little bit about this five weeks ago, but just a little bit more context the gospel has begun to break out, and this is the early church. James is the brother of Jesus, and he's leading the church. And these are Jewish men and women who are receiving the gospel, the good news. The gospel is really good news because the gospel says you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't pay your way to heaven. You can only receive God's grace by putting your belief and trust in Jesus. And so they are receiving this message, but as they receive this message, persecution and obstacles and opposition is starting to hit their life. And now these men and women who have been given so much, they've been given salvation, 
now they are looking to get out of the pressure. They're looking to get out of the mission. They're looking to get out of the challenge, and they just want to go and live a quiet, successful life. And James genuinely begins to scold and challenge the brethren, the men and women of the church. And he's saying, who do you think you are? Like, talking about what you're going to do tomorrow and how you're going to go over there and make a little bit of money. You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. Your life is but a mist. He says, what is your life? And he's challenging them to the core to say, what is motivating you? What is driving you? What is the purpose of your life? What is your goal? I don't think there's anything wrong with being successful. I want you to win and I want you to grow and I want your dreams to happen. But success is a shallow goal. Success, as I would define it, is all about adding value to you. People that have a goal to be successful, it's just about making themselves better and just adding value to their lives. I don't believe our goal should be to live a life of success. I think we should have a deeper goal and that is we should desire to live a significant life. And a significant life is interesting because significance by definition means to have meaning or purpose. And so the difference between a successful life and a significant life is success is about adding value to you while significance is always about adding value to others. I want us to be a significant church that we would add value to the community around us. That's what yesterday was all about. 200 and almost 50 people showed up on a Saturday to serve their community. 3,800 gifts given away. Why? Because if we're going to be a church in the city, we ought to be a significant one that adds value to people who are hurting. See, just because you are a mist doesn't mean that you aren't significant. Just because my life is a mist, just because it's passing by, doesn't mean that I can't live a significant life. I was reminded once again at Virgil's funeral, this is a man who by the world's definition has done a lot of successful things, but nowhere in that funeral did anybody get up and start talking about how great his designs are. No one got up behind the podium and said, let me just tell you what, he made the best dresses. I'll tell you, his shoe game was phenomenal. That's not what they remembered. Instead, the people that took that microphone talked about this successful man, but they talked about his significance in their life and how he added value, how he helped them, how he cared for them. Why? Because people will forget what we say, but they will never forget how we made them feel. Did we serve them? Did we love them? Did we help them? My sermons will be forgotten, but the question will be, did our church meet people where they were? I want us to be a significant church. And listen to me, a significant life isn't defined by length. It's always defined by legacy. What will live on after you are gone? What is your life? What is your life? Is it simply a life marked out to be successful or could we go deeper today? And could we hear the voice of God and say, for the sake of eternity, I want to live a significant life. Yes, my life is a mist, but just because it's a mist, it doesn't stop it from being significant. I must choose to live for something bigger than myself. I want to just point out a few passages in James, because I think there's three key attributes to a significant life. And I just want to show these to you. These are going to go very, very quickly. And then I want to challenge us today as we get ready to give. But, but the first word, I think, that if you're going to live a life of significance is the word obedience. Everyone say obedience. Notice what James says. James chapter 4, continuing in verse 15, he says, what is your life? Your, your life is but a mist. And then in this verse 15, he says, instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. What he's getting at is he saying, don't just make plans. Instead, as you make plans, involve God in your plans. Have you heard that great quote? Like, you know, man makes plans and then God laughs. Because so often we get going and we have all these ideas and all these thoughts and all of these dreams, but we've never actually stopped to say, God, what is it you've called me to do? 
because you will never live a significant life outside of the will of God. And the only way you will discover God's will for your life is when you choose to walk in obedience. When you choose to say, God, what is it you've called me to do? I want to do the thing that you've spoken to me and I want to obey you no matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, no matter the price. If you've called me to it, God, I want to walk in it. If we're going to be a church that actually is significant in this city, it will require obedience. Obedience. It's a word that we don't talk about a whole lot, but it's one of these words that actually pleases God. (laughs) You want to please God, it's not through sacrifice, it's through obedience. I want to be a person who walks in obedience to God. I don't want to do the easy thing, I want to do the right thing. You ever notice that most of the time, the easy thing is the wrong thing? I don't know why life works this way, but it's just, sometimes I'm like, that that seems too easy. That might not be right, you know? My kids right now, we're really working on obedience in our home. And I'm trying to teach these boys, yo, uh, delayed obedience is still disobedience. All the the parents said amen out there. We don't, I, I don't, we don't do the one, two, three thing in the Wilkerson house, you know? I see some of these parents, one, Mikey, two, Seth, two and a half. These are white kids, of course, but I'm just saying, <laughs> well, I'm not doing that in, in my house. When I speak, you, you obey. I, I, I have authority. I want us to be a church that we operate out of obedience. We don't operate out of convenience. If God has called us to do something, we're gonna say, God, we will do what you've called us to do. Some of you, you're new to our community and man, God's done a whole lot in six years, but this has been a journey of obedience. I've said it from day one, this is not a church for everyone. This is a church that has a specific and unique purpose. We love the entire city of Miami, but we are called to be a city on a hill. We are called to be a beacon of light in the midst of pain. And we're going to do the thing that God has called us to do. It didn't start with us owning properties and it didn't start with us owning buildings. It didn't start with us having a staff. It started with a group of people who got a word from God and said, we will not just do the easy thing. We're going to do the right thing. It began in my apartment some seven years ago with some shared values of saying, what would it look like if we would sacrifice and we would give ourselves to walking out these values, not just on a Sunday, but every day of the week? And would you believe it? In 2015, we launched at the JDD location where people are gathering right now today, 11 a.m. and a 6 p.m. service. And before you know it, about three months into it, it was growing. We had to go to three services. Another few more months, we went to four services. And then it was five services. And then it became six services. Some of y'all remember that back in the day. We had a 9 a.m. and an 8 p.m. It was pandemonium in the best of ways. And then we split into two locations and we were at the iTech Auditorium and we were at JDD. We had no idea all that God was planning to do, but it wasn't up to us. The outcome was never in our control. We can't control this life. This life is but a vapor. It's passing through. All we can control is to say, we're going to live a life of significance and it will be marked with obedience. And God, if we will obey you, we trust you will bring about an outcome. And some six years later now, thousands of people are a part of this community and thousands of people have been impacted because men and women said, we're gonna be a significant church. We're not just gonna be a successful church. We're gonna be a church that obeys God. Obeys God. I always want that to be a hallmark of this house. Can we be a church that's obedient to God? Today is our bricklayer's offering. And I've been challenging you for the last five weeks Ask God what it is that you should give. I'm not telling anybody an amount that they should give. That's not my job. My job is to shepherd and guide you to go and have real crucial conversations with your creator. But I wonder, have you even done that? Have you actually even asked God, God, what part should I play? Because I have a feeling God loves his church more than I do, that if you'll ask God, he'll speak to you. 
The question is, when he speaks to you, will you obey him? Because James says, don't just make your own plans. Involve God in the plans and say, God, what is it that you want me to do? I want to be a person of obedience. Number two, a life marked by significance is marked with the word service. Everyone say the word service. Look at what James says. This is just in the next chapter, just continuing the reading. James chapter five, verse one. He's challenging this group of Christians. Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Understand, ever since Jesus has ascended to the right hand of the Father, we are now living in this time period called the last days. These are the last days. We are waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. I talked about it in week two. Keep the end in mind. We are bringing heaven down to earth. We're not just asking God to get us out of here. We're understanding that everything about our reality is connected to eternity. That at this present moment in time, this is where eternity touches the earth. This is a significant moment. And James is coming at the church and he's challenging them. And he's speaking to them. He's saying, you're hoarding wealth in the last days. You're only thinking about yourself. You're complaining about only your problems and you're missing the fact that you have been saved to serve. You have been saved to make a difference. You have been blessed to be a blessing. It's amazing because one of the great topics that Jesus taught about that we don't talk a whole lot about in church is one of the things he talked about more than almost any other topic is the word greed. What's fascinating is there's not one person in this room who thinks that they're greedy. Like I just, I've, I've, how do I know? Because I've done a lot of confession with people and people never walk them off going, Pastor Rich, I gotta be honest with you, man. <clears throat> greedy, that's my struggle. We don't think so because we always think that greed has to do with a certain amount that Greedy is only for rich people or greedy is for only people that make that amount of money or have that much money. There's no way I could be greedy. The reality of it is, is that greed begins in your heart. It has nothing to do with what you have. It has everything with what you're unwilling to release. Many of us, we struggle with greed, meaning we are the focal point of every bit of our thinking, of all of our prayers. It's all about me, myself, and I. And James is challenging the church and he's trying to get them to think beyond themselves. And the reality of it is, is the way that you break selfishness in your life is through service. That's why we challenge our church from day one that servant leadership is our identity because we're not necessarily serving because people out there need help. We are serving first and foremost because we personally need help. The only way I can break my selfishness is to actually serve and to give myself. I didn't show up to I Love My City yesterday because the city so desperately needs me. I am not the hero of the story. Jesus Christ is the hero. I go to serve because I want to break my sin, greed, and selfishness. And I don't want to leave it up to my feelings. I don't feel greedy today, therefore I'm not greedy. I want to put it into check. How do you break the back of greed, you break the back of greed through generosity. By saying, I'm going to be a person who, who gives and trusts God. Look at what Jesus says when it comes to this idea of wealth. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See, today's offering is not about an amount of money. Although I'm believing that today that we're gonna see genuinely millions of dollars come in, that we're gonna end this year strong. All the projects that we laid out, building the parking lot, launching back into the city, all of the things that we wanna do, that's all gonna happen. Come on, somebody. It's all gonna happen. It's all gonna happen. But even greater than an amount is a participation that you and I would be people that would say, God, you have my heart. 
not just through song and not just through showing up to a church service, but to say, God, I'm gonna actually obey what Jesus said. And you said, where my treasure is, there my heart will be also. So Lord, I'm gonna show you today that you have my entire heart. It's gonna actually show up in my giving. A lot of us, we're just thinking about worldly wealth and we're not putting it in to eternity that one day we will stand before a righteous God. And it's not just, did you know Jesus? There's a second question, and that is, did you do what I called you to do? Do you know that there's rewards in heaven? Do you know that there's, there's different types of awards and jewels that we're gonna get in heaven based upon us obeying and doing what he's called us to do? I've often wondered, I think sometimes the people that we don't think have very much weight here on earth, I think when we get to heaven, we're gonna all be pretty surprised to see who's living in that mansion or who has that crown. I think we're all gonna be shocked that it wasn't about the successful person. It was about the person who decided to say, although my life is a mist, I don't have to neglect being significant. I can add value to this kingdom by giving of myself and by serving and by being generous. Come on, somebody, put your hands together if you know what I'm talking about. I know we might have some guests that are tuning in today. I know we might have some guests in the room. This is a day that's for our house. This is a day for people that love Voo Church. And I just always wanna encourage our house that this is good ground to invest into. This is a good place to put your finances. I really believe that what's happening here is revival, bro. I really believe our best days are in front of us. Just some amazing things that have taken place just this year alone. Would you believe that right now, this year alone, when it comes to this idea of service, this year we now have a servant leader army of 1,224 people. Come on, somebody, make some noise right there. We now today have 340 different crew leaders. Can we make some noise for all of our crew leaders? In the year 2021, we have now seen 4,555 people participate in a VU crew. This is amazing stuff right here. I love gathering large on Sunday, but I get even more excited about people that are getting into community, doing life together, people that are needed and known, that somebody knows their name and they know somebody else's name. This is how you build a healthy church. But this is a church that serves. This is a church that actually wants to do something with our midst. This is actually a church that wants to give themselves wholeheartedly, that we wanna seize the moment. It's not about being famous. It's not about being popular. It's not even about being successful. It's about being obedient and being servant leaders. We've now this year alone served 9,783 I Love My City hours. Can you go ahead and thank God for a generous church? Since we launched in 2015, we have just broken 50,000 I Love My City service hours. What's amazing is that the pandemic was a challenging time where we faced major obstacles and opposition for over a year. We weren't able to gather physically, but I love that oftentimes that which appears to be an obstacle is actually an opportunity because it forced us to go online. And now today we've broadened an entire online audience. There's people that are watching from really all over the world. In fact, 195 nations out of the 197 now tune in to Voo Church. Can we thank God for that? It's pretty <laughs> remarkable. But even right now, as, as I'm preaching, we now have 220,000 YouTube subscribers that listen to the sermons every week at Voo Church. Can we thank God for what he's doing? Proud of our worship team. Last year, we gave generously to get behind the worship team and to put together a project, and we had the best project ever. By the way, this week, I sat in a writing room, and uh, over two days, we wrote eight brand new songs. I can't wait for you to hear this music. We're gonna be recording it in February and March. You're gonna love it. Uh, but Vu Worship has just stepped up. Now on YouTube, they have 75,000 YouTube subscribers this year. Can we thank God for that? Total, between all of our YouTube audience, we now have 303,000 YouTube subscribers that are participating in the ministry of Voo Church. 
What I love is, is that as we give even today and as you bring in your generosity, our church from the day that we began, before there was a staff member, before somebody got paid, before we had a mortgage, before we had anything, we always had a commitment that we're gonna be a generous house. And so every dollar that comes into Voo Church, 10% of that dollar is given away. In fact, I'm gonna show you something that over the last four weeks of what you did over the last four weeks, it's already been done on your behalf, but Vu is a generous church. And today, as you give to this house, we're gonna be continuing to give from this house. And this year alone, we have now given away over a million dollars in 2021 alone. I need you to make some noise, Vu Somi. I need you to make some noise, Vu City. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Almost $1.1 million this year alone. And here's what's amazing. Since we've launched now, we have now given away $3.6 million for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But we're gonna keep serving. We're gonna keep serving because we think a significant life is marked by service. I don't want the warning of James that I'm just hoarding all the blessings that God has given us. We want to reach out and we wanna step out and we wanna play our part in the here and now. Since we've launched our church, we have baptized 2,107 people who have been water baptized at Voo Church. And since we launched in 2015, we have now seen over 15,000 people give their life to Jesus Christ. Come on, this is for the sake of eternity. I need somebody to give God some praise all over the room today. This is what your giving is doing. Your giving is helping this church do significant work, eternal work, but it only happens when you recognize I have been saved to serve. I've been saved to serve. Significant life is not measured by its length, it's measured by the legacy that it leaves. And our legacy is gonna be one of obedience, it's gonna be one of service, and then lastly, I think a significant life is always marked by this word, Perseverance. Everyone say perseverance. Look at what James says. I'm just going through the chapters. James chapter five, he's challenging this early church and he says, chapter five, verse seven, be patient then brothers and sisters until the Lord's coming. He's coming back. He's coming back to bring new heavens and a new earth. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. It's like he's challenging them. He's saying, yo, don't just live a short term and don't just live a shallow goal of trying to be a success. Live a life of significance and a life of significance will always require patience and perseverance. You know what today is about? Today, every year on this day for me, is not about the masses and the crowds coming in. It is about the faithful few that are committed to this mission and vision to say, once again, I'm putting a stake in the ground. Vu Church is not leaving in 2022, but rather we are prophesying and declaring that we will persevere no matter the storm, no matter the struggle, no matter the pain, no matter the heartache. We're called to this. And if we're called to it, His grace will get us through it. And so what do we say at Vu? We say, if you don't quit, you win. If we're gonna live a life of significance, adding value to our city, adding value to each other, we gotta make a decision. We're not giving up, we're not quitting. He says, think about the prophets that in, in the face of suffering, that they just kept speaking the truth and they just kept showing up to the post. He uses Job. Job, well, he had not just a bad day. He had, well, 
he had a really tumultuous time. He lost everything. But he didn't give up on God and he didn't quit. The scripture says that his, his latter was greater than his former. I don't know what it looks like in your life right now. I don't know if it feels like you're in a desert season. I know that the last 18 to almost 20 months at Voo Church, there have been lots of struggles and lots of challenges and there's been lots of opposition. But I've just decided I'm just gonna stand my post and play my part I'm gonna get up no matter what the weather looks like on the outside, no matter what it feels like in the current culture and say, I'm called to this. So I'm gonna stand up and play my part and persevere. I'm not quitting, I'm not stopping. I don't know if I will get all of the successes that man thinks is a big deal. I do know that I can choose to live a life of significance, that I won't quit, that I won't back down, that I'll recognize that God's called us to something. And if we'll persevere like Job, he will show up and he is full of compassion and mercy. I wonder how many people they missed out on his compassion and mercy because they gave up too soon. Some of us right now, it's like, it could be your marriage, could be your business, could be a relationship. And we're so quick to throw in the towel that we miss out on the providence of God. God was just saying, if you would have just waited a little while longer, I was gonna show up in a marvelous way. See, I love church. Church is a community of people. To me, the church of Jesus Christ has been going for 2000 years. And if I die tomorrow, and I could die tomorrow because my life is a mist, the church will continue to move forward. I can't think of anything better on the earth to pour your life into. I can't think of anything better on the earth to give financially to, to continue to say, I wanna accelerate. I wanna see it move forward. I wanna see the kingdom of God established in a dark place like Miami and let the light of Jesus shine through. See church, it's not this program. You hear me say this all the time. It's not today, it's not me preaching. It's so much deeper and so much bigger than all of that. Church is a community of people who have shared values, who give glory to the one true God. His name is Jesus Christ, who recognize that I am not my own. I was purchased at a price. He paid the ransom for my soul. And now that I have been saved, I give everything unto you, God. For where my treasure is, there my heart will be also. And God, you have my entire heart. And you and I, we've just, we've just decided to go on that journey together. None of us are perfect. None of us got it fully right, but we are committed to one another. And we're not just committed to fellowship, we're committed to a mission. And the mission is let's go and reach other people for the sake of eternity. Let's go and empty hell and populate heaven. Let's go and reach this city. I don't know if we're gonna be the most successful, but I know we can be significant if we'll choose to persevere. It's not this program. It's not just what happens on Sunday. It's what happens every day of the week. Church to me is when those Surfside Towers came down and our friend Mike Noriega, his grandmother was in there and within hours, dozens of people from our church were surrounding Mike and his family. Church for me is when my friend Ty, who I see him here in the early service when his father passed away, that within minutes, There's a community of people surrounding he and his family saying, we're gonna stand with you, we're gonna pray with you. We don't know what to say, but we've got one thing, it's called the ministry of presence. We're not going anywhere. Church for me is the fact that there's men right now in that prison and there's people from our church that are saying, you are not forgotten, you are not overlooked, we see you, there's value on your life, you are significant. Church for me is what's happening on Tuesday nights and celebrate recovery as men and women who are dealing with addictions get together and as they begin to confess and talk, they find purpose and they find healing as they come together. Church for me is when my little daughter Waylon this past summer born and within hours she was in the NICU, hundreds of text messages on my phone within minutes of the news going out. Why? Because it's a community of people that are coming together to say, you know what? 
As you walk through the valleys of life, this church, it's gonna make the valleys more manageable. But as you find yourselves on the mountaintops of life, we're gonna make sure that those mountaintops are even more memorable because as the church of Jesus Christ, we're gonna do it together. We're gonna go with it together. What is your life? Are you just living for success? Or are you living for significance? Because let me tell you what, God says you're pretty significant. This is not some positive thinking message. This is the gospel that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would put their trust and belief in him shall not die but have eternal life. God said, you're not worthless. God said, you're so valuable. I will give my son Jesus in your place. You're not worthy, but man, you're also not worthless. There's value on your life. And he says, you're significant. He says, I have plans for you, good plans, but don't go at those plans on your own. Involve me, put me at the center. Realize that everything about your reality is connected to eternity. Are you living your life just for today or are you living your life for a legacy that long after you're gone, that the work that you have done, it would sustain and it would go on? I was thinking this week about this place, it's called Death Valley. And Death Valley is a, is a desert region, it's the hottest area really on the earth and there's no rainfall there whatsoever. I think we got a picture of it if we can bring it up here. This is Death Valley. No life in Death Valley. It's a hot place. It's a desert region. It's a wilderness. But something radical took place in 2016. You see, I think this is a picture for what a lot of us look like in life that we feel dry, we feel like it's not going good. Or maybe even a church at times can feel like this or, or areas of our life can feel like Death Valley, just dry in a wilderness. But in 2016, a phenomenon happened. It was called a super bloom. There was rainfall in Death Valley. And look what happened in 2016 when the rain fell in Death Valley. Come on, somebody. It's called a super bloom. What nobody knew is that there was seed all over the floor of Death Valley. The only thing that was missing was water. And I just felt like telling someone today, your life is a mist. And just because your life is a mist doesn't mean that you are insignificant. In fact, a mist is water particles. And although you might feel dry today, Something tells me there's enough in your life, there's enough mist in your life that if you'll mix that with the power of God and if you'll choose not to give up or quit, it is just a matter of time that there are seeds in your life that they are not dead, but rather they are dormant. And if you will hang in there, if you will not quit, you're gonna see a super bloom take place in your life. The best days for our church are in front of us if we don't quit. If we don't back down, if we stay in the fight. What is your life? Your life is significant if it's marked with obedience, service, and perseverance. God has planted a seed of his word on the inside of you. And if you don't quit, you win. Church, let's not give up now. Let's radically come together and let's be generous and let's see a harvest happen, not only in our lives, but in the city of Miami. Would you bow your heads all over this place and at our city location online? Lord, I thank you so much that you're moving today. God, I thank you so much, God, that you are at work today. God, I just pray for people all over the room today. Lord, let them be reminded of the good news, the good news that you came to save us. You came to set us free. God, we could never save our souls. We could never forgive ourselves, but you did the heavy lifting. And so we put our trust in you. We inhale your grace, God, and we exhale faith. God, we love you. God, we put all of our faith into that name, the name of Jesus. But today, Lord, I pray, God, that you would begin to work in people's lives. 
Lord, may our church always be a church that reaches the lost. May our church always be a church that reaches the down and out, serves our community. God, make us a, a significant church. One that's adding value to those around us. And Lord, I now pray for anybody in this room who's far from you. Those at City who are, who are far from you. Those online right now that you don't know Jesus. That's you today. With your head bowed and your eyes closed. Would you just be honest and say, Rich, I wanna surrender my life to Jesus, the God who came to me to save me, to set me free. If that's you, if you wanna put your trust in Jesus today, whether you're online or at City or here at SOMI, on the count of three, would you just be bold? Would you lift your hand up high enough and long enough just so I can see it? I wanna include you in this prayer of salvation. Hands are already starting to go up here at SOMI. I trust the same thing's happening there at City. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. If that's you, lift it up. That's me, Rich. That's me. That's me. Thank you, God. You put your hands down. Come on, at both of our locations today, church, can we just pray this prayer? Say, dear Jesus, today I surrender my life. I give it over to you. Forgive me. I repent. I turn from my ways and I turn towards you. Put my trust in you, Jesus. Save me. I want to follow you. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Come on, Voo Church, can we go ahead and celebrate some people today who just prayed that prayer? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many people today raising their hands, and I'm believing that salvation's occurring all throughout this house and really in every space that's tuning in today. And in a moment, I'll give you some more information about what you can do with that. But today is the Bricklayers Offering Sunday, and I think it's a sacred Sunday that we as a church, we say, what is our church? What is the life of our church? We don't have to be the biggest church. We, in fact, that was never our goal. Our goal has always been to be a healthy, significant church that the city would have to pay attention to because we're serving the city. We're loving the city. We're gonna get ready to give today, and many of you, you've come in prepared. Others of you, maybe you're not prepared, but there's an offering envelope there in your chair. It says, for the sake of eternity on it. This is our vision statement for us as we move into 2022. Lots of ways that you can give. You can make a check out to Vu Church. You can uh, give online at vuchurch.com uh, slash give. You can text. All those same ways that Don Shree made mention is how you can give. Those of you online, if you're giving today, we would love for you on the website just to check off the Bricklayers offering, just so we know how to designate that. All of the money that comes in here is just towards projects. It's towards accelerating. It has nothing to do with bills for this year. It has everything to do with next year and where we're going. But as you're preparing to give today, um, whether you're online at City or here at SOMI, I wanted you to see what you have been a part of over the last five weeks, because this is a generous house. And before we ask you to give, well, we've already been giving on your behalf. Why don't you check out the video and this special song as you prepare to give? Check out the screen. Each week leading up to our Bricklayers offering. We have been blessing different local and global organizations, different church plants on behalf of your generosity. I am about to call Pastor Mayo. We are at Four Kids. We are outside of his house right now. We've been partnering with them for years. Your guys are going into prison with us. We're about to call my friend Pastor John Termini. Our aim is to come in partnership with people like you guys at Convoy of Hope. Y'all are making a huge difference. For the bless you with the check of $10,000. $5,000. With $10,000. No way! <laughs> We'd like to financially bless you with a gift of $5,000. Of $20,000. <laughs> we want to send you a check for $20,000. Hey, what's wrong with y'all? Thank you, Jesus. We want to give your church $10,000 for all the <laughs> We want to sow a seed into the for $30,000. We want to be a part of it. We want to see as the miracle comes to pass that Voo Church got to play a small part though. Thank you. Thank you guys. Today I am with Gary from the A21. I'm here with Betty, the executive director of Glory House. We're grateful for you and for Blessed Rebel. You guys are an incredible nonprofit. We are a homeless uh, shelter. We have men, women, and children live on campus with well, us. We've sought out to reach, rescue, and restore those affected by the horrific scourge of modern day slavery. I get emotional just because um, it's hard work 
and it is people like uh, Vu that helps us to do the be able to do what we do. I really just kept praying to God, asking for some sort of organization or church, anything to just help me with this process and this journey. And God sent Vu. We're so grateful that we get to partner with you. We're so grateful that you're a part of our church. We love your family so much. <laughs> On behalf of Vu Church, we want to gift you with this check. <laughs> of $20,000. $5,000. $20,000. Oh my God. $10,000. Hey, we love you. We love you guys. It's, it's just beautiful. I'm so thankful for food. You guys are doing phenomenal work here in Miami, and we're just so glad to partner with you. It's, it's really an honor. We love you, and we believe in you. Thank you. forward. Well done, worship team. And DC and Wyatt and myself, we're going to stand here. And just like your family, we're giving today in this offering. And we're believing that this offering is for the sake of eternity. And so Dawn going to pray. And then as she finishes praying, I'm going to ask the host to pass the containers. And today we're going to believe that God is going to do something radical in this house as we give a generous offering to accelerate the vision in this place. Come on, Dawn would you pray? God, thank you for this moment. Lord, we just give you glory. It's just like we sang, you've never left us. Not for a minute, not for an hour. Your faithfulness 
it's eternal. And so God, we just give you the glory that you deserve. You've been so good to us. And Lord, from that goodness that we've received, God, we respond today. We say, Lord, use us. Use every resource that you put in our hands. Use every resource you put in our hearts, God. Lord, this love that you've given us, let us share it. Let us live a life marked by generosity for your glory. God, you've proven faithful time and time again. Let others discover the love that we found. We love you. Use every seed yes. all across our community in this world. Lord, bring people that are far from you close. Yes. In the name of Jesus, do what only you can do as we trust you together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Well, come on, as the containers pass by, come on, sing it again. Everything we've got, come on. Container passes, you, you can stand. You're my deliverer. I know I'm never wrong. I've never yes. been abandoned. You are my inheritance. You are my strength. Rich Wilkerson here. I want to say a big thank you for watching today's content, believing and trusting that it impacted you. And if it did help you or it encouraged in any way, I would love for you to like it and share it with some other people. Make sure to subscribe to the Voo Church YouTube page where you can get more content just like this. And while you're there, go peruse the gallery, as they say, and see past talks and past content that I believe is gonna help you. I love you. Best is yet to come.